This film profiles the Across the Divide project, sponsored by Cheryl, the Centre for Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Learning, undertaken by the Science and Engineering Education Research and Innovation Hub in collaboration with a range of schools within the Faculty of Science and Engineering. The answer's an easy one. Came on a primary school visit with you and uh, had a bit of a shock. Was it a seven-year-old lad who was showing me around? The one who actually shows a green screen room, confidently using that, cutting video. And I suddenly realised, give these kids a few years on us, they're going to come to the university, are we going to be ready for the learning styles? Are we going to be ready for their expectations? So that's why I got into Cheryl, who was in the hope of understanding the gap through understanding and see what we can do. I don't think our practices have changed much in the last 20 years and they don't reflect the changes in the technology that has happened. I run the industry experience program so we have about 70 students doing placements in industry as part of their degree and I'm interested in how schools are going about tackling the same issues around employability about especially in engineering because it's a big issue for lots of engineering companies is where their recruits are going to come from. Okay, so we are the JCB Academy uh, and our whole premise, rather than setting out to get great vocational academic outcomes uh, and then hoping that some skills might fall out along, along the way, the process for us is very much focused on designing our curriculum delivery around that core set of principles. I think the biggest thing for me has been seeing how project-based learning and learning in real context is applied to something that's a curriculum um, and a qualification, so seeing how that's done alongside a qualification is really exciting. I think, especially uh, when we talked about teaching and learning, lots of the strategies and styles of teaching and learning that are being used here are being used in lots of other schools as well, but I think the, the real key thing is the links to industry. They were clearly resourced to deliver very practical learning, and this is a scale I just didn't anticipate. To actually see a room where you've got 20 plus lathes, and you accept that this is for a class of, was it, 198, they've got to chop them up. It was amazing just to see the investment, the space. Uh, actually, also, there's, there was a large open spaces, which shows they've got the confidence, not just to ram teaching into every corner. In terms of, of what I wanted, what we could take away from here, it's really interesting because a lot of the stuff that I've seen has been based upon uh, physical resources and things. What I'm trying to pick through is, well, why does it have to be uh, isolated to a secondary or anything else? Why can't it be key stage two, key stage one even? I suppose the lin industry links were very impressive. Um, nice that they were sort of in contact with young graduates who were able to sort of lead the way and show them through their own experiences. And as we were talking this morning about learning outcomes, not simply having them at the unit level, they've got them right down to individual sessions and are confident enough to effectively put them on the board as you walk into the room. Uh, which really does, I suppose is it's a working environment. Mm -hmm. I look at doing four days with the company, working alongside them within my apprenticeship scheme, but the same day I'll get sponsored to go to university mm -hmm. and do a degree within that company. never to underestimate children. I mean, the, in year four they're only eight and nine, but they're perfectly capable. Just give them some equipment and just let them see what they can do with it. It's making sure that they continue it within the secondary schools. If we're teaching um, for the real life and meaning, uh, making sure that they don't just then go to teach to the test in a secondary school and they um, aren't getting those embedded um, skills and the habits of mind that if we're trying to promote in primary school that that's continuing in secondary school then into the workforce. But actually just I've sat with a lad who has told me how a 3D printer works at a level of detail and so articulate that if he hit us next week we'd be struggling I think in terms of the facilities we've got and how he'd perceive us and again it comes back to that Rolls-Royce challenge question how do you keep that creativity, wrap it in good engineering principles and then push them out into the world of engineering? 
and I still don't think we're there. Well, I think we're further away than I thought we were. Definitely made me think twice about how do we make sure that we are not complacent when we are trying to attract these young people to come to our university. You, you just sort of forget, you know, how good they are at things and how I think expectations have to be higher. I think we underestimate what they can do.